Hi, my name is Andreas. I'm the director of the Center for Quantum Nanoscience here in Seoul in South Korea. Before I came to Korea, I was a researcher at IBM Research in uh, San Jose, California in the United States. And I spent about 18 years uh, working in uh, the research division of IBM. I've been a researcher for now about 20 years, focusing on the properties of magnetic atoms on surfaces. Sometimes we call them spins on surfaces. And there we've made, over this 20-year time period, lots and lots of progress to be able to measure individual magnetic atoms, single spins, uh, to then measure their, their dynamic properties, how do they, how do they behave um, as a function of time. And there are lots of interesting, interesting uh, processes to measure there. And most recently, we've become very interested in these concepts of quantum, quantum information, uh, quantum properties of atoms. And so luckily, now we are able to also measure the quantum properties of these atoms, um, maybe in the long term towards quantum bits for quantum computation, uh, but really more on the basic science part of it. Before I went to the United States, um, I got my PhD in Germany. So I'm, I'm German by, by birth and also by citizenship. And uh, so I got my education in Göttingen in Germany. And, uh, but early on, even after the first uh, two years of studies, I spent one year in the United States. I've always been interested in, in uh, going abroad, I guess. And so I spent one year as an exchange student in San Diego, in California, and that was a really fantastic time. Um, not just for professional or student reasons, also cultural reasons. And I also happened to meet my then girlfriend, now wife, at that time. So this was, this was a fantastic, fantastic year. Uh, then I went back to Germany and, uh, and uh, got my education there. And, but during the PhD time, I went back to the United States, this time to Berkeley, also in California. And I spent one year doing research in, in Berkeley. So even before I sort of officially went to the United States as a postdoc, I had already spent two years there as a student. The question, of course, what happens to you as a person when you go abroad is an extremely interesting one, right? And uh, I went as a student, my first, basically when I was still a relatively young student, and that really changed me, I think, for the rest of my life. This was really, really life-changing experience to go to another culture, um, to see how dy dynamic um, San Diego, the university was at the time, still is. Um, it was really an amazing amazing experience. Now, in total, I've been outside of Germany about as long as I've lived inside of Germany. So I really am now kind of a, a nationless kind of researcher, right? You become kind of a person of the world. And, and this is really what is important for science. Science is not a domestic issue. Science is an international issue, right? This is extremely important for science, that you are a dynamic international institution and you don't focus too much on the, on the you know, domestic issues, but you really are an international institution. So the question why I came to Korea, I get asked, of course, all the time. Uh, so my wife and I, about five years ago, we were sitting on our perfect balcony in California. It was super weather. Yeah, California, of course, is one of the most amazing places in the world to live. And we were looking at each other and we we're thinking, this is just too perfect. We're too young to be at this stage in our life where we're going to be here for the rest of our life. We needed some challenge, we needed some change, we needed some more, even more dynamic um, opportunity. And so we really made a family decision to look at where is the most dynamic place in the world where we can create a basic science research center. And so we looked, we tried to look in the United States. Of course, the United States is, a, is the powerhouse in, in basic science, but very difficult to get in and, and to have the opportunity to create a new research center happens extremely rare. Same in Germany, right? There are some institutions like Max Planck where you may be able to do this, but also extremely rare opportunities. And then a colleague of mine here in Korea told me about this opportunity of the Institute for Basic Science and that they are looking for people like myself to create research centers on a fairly big scale 
with sufficient funding and support over long periods of time. And so my wife and I took this opportunity extremely seriously and we were first invited, I believe in December of, this is I think 2014. And uh, we immediately hopped on the plane and over Christmas time we were already looking at Korea and exploring the opportunities of the Institute for Basic Science. So why are we here is really a question both from a personal and a professional point of view. From the personal point of view we needed the challenge, the opportunity to do something new, something different, maybe bigger, maybe better, but, but uh, a, a new challenge in life. And, uh, and from a personal point of view we, we needed the same thing, we needed to, to uh, move, we needed to become you know, world citizens again. I think science is, is, is even better than I imagined when I was a kid. Now when I was a kid I tended to take things apart. I wanted to know how things work. And the example that my mother always gives is I had a transistor radio. Maybe some of you don't know what that is, like a little radio that had discrete components in it right, used to receive the radio. And I took it apart because I wanted to know what is in there. And then I had a big box full of pieces and of course I had no idea how to put this back together. Right? And this was before YouTube. So you couldn't just look up how to put this thing back together, right? And so, but it, it shows you that I always had the drive, even as a relatively young kid, to understand how things work. And this is still ongoing to this day, right? What drives me as a scientist nowadays is I want to understand how things work. What happens when I put atoms next to each other on the surface? How do they talk to each other? How can I control the quantum states of these things? And what's useful about that, right? How does this stuff work? So this is really, I think, in the end, what drives scientists, is to know how things work. Ask yourself the question, do I want to be a scientist? Right? Why would I want to be a scientist? And, and the thing I can tell you is, it is the greatest job on Earth. You, get to, you have to love science in order to be a scientist, obviously. If you don't love science, don't become a scientist. If you do love science, you get to explore you get to ask questions that nobody has asked before, right? If you want to be a good scientist, you have to answer a question that you cannot look up on Wikipedia, that the internet does not know, right? That's what we do. We try to find things, answers to questions that are not known. I love this part, right? The exploring the, the unexplored. Um, you get to meet lots of great people. You get to go to conferences, travel internationally, right? You get to hire people, be a manager at some point, uh, have an international work crew. Um, it's, it's, it's never ending. You know, the challenges are so different from day to day. You have basically like five, six jobs at the same time and uh, you have to manage yourself. You have to you know, manage yourself to not uh, work all the time because I guess most of the scientists I know love, love the work. Right? So what do you need to do to be a good scientist? You need to be curious. The only th really requirement that you need to do is be curious. Ask questions. Try to figure out how things work. Um, don't take stupid answers you know, at face value. Right? If you don't understand why something is the way it is, just ask. Right? And, and uh, every scientist can explain to you everything they do. If they can't explain it, they don't really understand what they're doing yet. Right? So you can do this with your parents. You can do this with your teachers in school. You should definitely do that with your teachers in school. And you should definitely do this with your parents. And, uh, and don't stop that process. Right? If you want to be a good scientist, always ask questions. If you want to learn more about our center, Center for Quantum Nanoscience, please visit our website, qns.science, or subscribe to this channel.